What's up, everyone? I'm here with my good friends Chloe and Mick, and today we're going to talk about the production for This Is What Hell Is Like. This is what hell is like. I don't think I will survive. So tired of the lonely nights. I just want you back by my side. My name's Chloe. Um, what did I do? I wrote the song This Is What Hell Is Like. Um, wrote it, sang it, helped produce it with my friend Nick Anthony. Yeah, and I'm Mick, and I was the director of photography on this, and I was also, you know, involved with the writing of the script and the pre-production. And I'm Michael. I directed and also helped with the script. Mick and I kind of wore a lot of different hats that overlapped a lot from pre-production all the way through, like, the final render. I'd also like to introduce some of the cast and crew that worked on this project with us, and I'll provide full credits at the end of this video. First up, this is Bubby, our lead. This was her acting debut. This is Tyler, playing the boyfriend character. This was also his acting debut. This is Christopher, the visual effects artist. And lastly, this is Michael Malugin. He stuck out long days and went hours over schedule with us to film behind the scenes and lend a hand when needed. All of the behind the scenes footage was shot by him. So I wrote and finished This Is What Hell Is Like in May of 2020 and then presented it to Michael. We were sitting <laughs> oh, at this yeah. coffee shop for like an hour just like running. We went through every scene, every lyric, every verse. We were like, what's going to accompany each yeah, verse? I think we had like 20 scene ideas. 20 scene ideas. And I was like, all right, guys, I have nothing to contribute to this conversation anymore. I need to go teach a spin class. <laughs> they were like, all right, bye. Don't leave like, And then like after she left, we like, like the ideas, the ideas started, started so long. They like finished the entire. We were sitting there like stuck between like three or four. Yeah, exactly. And then and yeah. I was like, well, I gotta go. Bye. Like, sorry. I think I got a text from from you saying, well, once you left, um, the entire concept came to life. I was gonna say, I think a big part of it too was kind of thinking about what effects we were able to do because I think one thing that's important to mention as well is that we had like no money for this like there was we couldn't like rent any equipment like we couldn't hire people like we yeah. had very this was, shoestring budget yeah Ball yeah and so budget. a big part of the planning initially was thinking of effects that would kind of sell the video and sell the concept that wouldn't you know be impossible to do with like a two or three man team so let's uh, I guess we can just jump into the opening so, okay, one thing that we really thought about a lot when we were shot listing this project was uh, camera movement. And so, uh, kind of in the beginning, we had a lot more of a, it was like a floaty glide cam. Because uh, as the song intensifies, we wanted to go handheld and really like lean into that shake. Um, but a lot of these opening shots we all did on, we did all on glide cam, just to give it kind of that floaty, more ethereal, like gentle feeling. Yeah, and I mean, this is kind of where I think we found a nice like balance between budget and like make, getting the shot we want because obviously we don't have the money to like hire a steady cam op or like get it like a Ronin 2 or a Movie or something. So we were able to kind of get the effect we wanted as far as like the feel of the camera movement with just a glide cam and a black magic. So okay, yeah. And then I guess on this floaty orbiting shot, the one logistics thing that I thought was fun is we had to kind of choreograph a dance with both Mick and I, because Mick was pulling off of the monitor uh, that was on the camera on the glide cam while I was opping. And we had to orbit around Bubby while he was pulling, which was just horrible conditions to pull. And then we had to have the coffee table be out of the way for us to complete the orbit and then slide it back into place at the right time. So we ran that dance a couple times and it was like over my shoulder and then pivoting and it was just super janky, but it definitely and, worked out. And right, I guess I just don't know who would be watching this. So in case people aren't aware, mm. Michael was operating on the glide cam, which requires both of his hands. And I was pulling focus with a wireless uh, focus system so that he would be able to operate without me obstructing him trying to pull focus on the camera. But we don't have any kind of wireless uh, monitor set up. So I had to be next to him looking at the onboard monitor that was attached to the camera to be able to see if it was in focus or not, which was very difficult on some of these shots involved lots of spinning and seeing the entire room. <laughs> and the whole, I don't know, like one of the big anchors for this project is, was a Polaroid. And it was this one Polaroid she took in this opening scene. And we see it kind of come back. But the mirror over in the left of the frame right now, uh, 
I loved it for a lot of reasons, but it also made things really hard a lot of the time because, you know, that's a really small room and we have a few pretty, a lot of really important scenes to the video in there and there's just always a mirror that's kind of like opposite the angle we were shooting from 90% of the time. I think it was my idea, but at the end of the day, it all becomes all of our ideas. But I really wanted um, Tyler like touching her tattoos and that's right and she's yatted and it's fucking beautiful and she has this really cool piece um right like right on her sternum and so i thought it'd be really cool to get a shot just very like i really wanted there to be a lot of intimate shots kind of viewpoints that like you normally share with a person that's only between you two well what the fuck is wrong with you like i give you all this time yeah the first argument scene, scene. <laughs> As you can tell, tensions were super high on set and no one had a good time. This is the first visual effect shot in the video, uh, and it was a Polaroid time freeze. And so, uh, kind of the whole thing we were going for in the script was where there's this massive argument, and then all of a sudden everything stops, and Bubby just kind of takes a moment to breathe and like kind of sinks to the wall and hides away. But we took a bunch of different pictures of the Polaroids with the sim with similar lighting conditions. And my brother did the VFX on this shot and we just put them all in the shot. And so one thing I like with this shot is that I feel like I spend so much time when I'm thinking about lighting, trying to hide shadows. And like, I, th I think of them so often as like kind of this ugly nuisance that's distracting from what's important in the frame. But something about this shot, I like that there is kind of a somewhat hard shadow that's like coming to her and they're connecting and sinking down. Just little visual things like that that I thought were interesting. And this is the, I guess this is the first time we kind of call back to that first Polaroid. So yeah, in this, in this scene, it's, uh, you know, post big argument and she's just kind of in her own space doing her own thing, painting. And we see Tyler come in and his kind of motivation here is just, you know, hey, sorry about the fight. Like that was kind of dumb. You know, here's a vinyl, here's some flowers. And we have it where she kind of gets startled by him as he enters the room and it just kind of ticks her off because she's still pissed at him. Also, can you talk about how you, I thought this was cool. I'm not a big film guru, but uh, we filmed this at like 10 o'clock at night and there were, you guys had to put lights out the window to make it look like it was kind of like dusky. Oh yeah, we had we had a couple just because of the way we had to sh like shoot the scene order. Um, we had to deal with like light that disappeared too fast, so we definitely had to boost levels in certain parts of the room to make it feel like it was uh, like there was some level of continuity, shot to shot. Yeah. Or and I think one thing to talk about that scene as well is just how beautiful the location was for that. Like I don't know how we initially planned on doing the painting scene. I don't remember, but like. It's just that little that alcove room. with windows on, on three sides of it. Mm -hmm. And there's just like all those trees out there. So you just get light rays from the sun. And then we put a couple lights out there as well, which hopefully isn't too obvious. I know there's like multiple shadows, but I was hoping people wouldn't notice that, I guess. Because <laughs> I think it looks really nice <laughs> on too. her and on the scene and on the chair and everything. BME or just BME? We out here. We getting it done. <laughs> I really liked how this scene cut together. Yeah. Like we just see her kind of increasing uh, frustration and kind of like animosity and rage build up. Bubby did a great job. I never kill it. I, sh I aim for mediocrity at all times. Yeah, no. See, I don't want to set the bar too high for the next time I work. Yeah. This is Best like the beginning of the climax of the right here. Can't you leave? Just fuck off. I hate I swear to God, I'm so fucking done. Got any more than that? This scene was the most stressful scene to shoot in the entire video because we had two breakaway vase props. We shot a previous scene. Well, we can, yeah, first we can set the scene that like we have three days of shooting scheduled. Right. This is our first day of shooting. We have to get it done because we only have this location for the single day. We have two breakaway vases that, uh, you know, we don't have more than that. So if we break both of them, we're kind of out of luck with this scene. And this was the last thing we were filming this day. And yeah, in one of the <laughs> one of the earlier scenes we shot this, this day, we used the vase, uh, it ended up getting cut 
from the shot anyways, but Tyler, like, after he gets rejected from uh, from the painting scene, he, like, puts flowers in the vase and sits down. And on take four or five, he, like, set them down and put the flowers in, and it tipped over and just shattered. Everyone's watching at this point, too. Everyone, like, who was even working on the production was just yeah. sitting looking at the vase. He sits down, and it's just slow-mo. Everyone starts looking at each other like, is this actually fucking happening Yeah, right I feel now? like everyone was like, god damn. Well, and you, you probably had that footage, right? I have that, yeah. Falling down. yeah. <laughs> With this shot, it was really stressful because there was a lot of different kind of frames within this, whole, like this one shot that we wanted to hit, where it goes from like the, the, cl the shot on Bubby's face when she's screaming, and then we, the camera follows her hands down to grab the vase and then back up to her face. And then we whip over to Tyler to see him dodge the vase as it breaks. And then we like push in and whip back to Bubby. So it was a lot of marks that we had to get from Mick for pulling focus. Uh, but that knowing we could only do it one time was gonna be gnarly. So it was like their performance had to be spot on. Your pulling had to be spot on. My framing had to be spot on and uh, like the va just there's just so much that could have gone wrong. So I think we rehearsed this like 15 times with a soda can. I was gonna say you guys yeah, literally had like a little was. choreography. You're like, all right, Mick is literally oh. gonna be trailing right here, 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 and then, but we just threw a can at the wall. Yeah. We were like, we have yeah. to fucking send it. Yeah, the most anxiety-inducing thing for me is looking at the frame and being on my mark, and it's just not sharp. Mark one. That one. It's a little fishy. Mark two. Just like if this is not sharp, I'm gonna yeah. fucking end this. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you think when you heard my song? This is what hell is like. Oh, I was stoked. I really liked it. Yeah, no, for real. Not just saying that because there's a camera pointed at me. No, I liked it because I mean I like all your music. But, okay, now you're just... Well, oh, no, 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 let me finish. But some of it's shit. <laughs> this leads up to my favorite shot in the whole video, which is this shot where oh, we move was... back with Tyler. We, this is actually one of the, probably the hardest shot in the entire video. Yeah. Oh my, I, I think we, we conceived this shot like way before we knew what the location would be like too. Like, I just remember we had this idea of like having a lot of movement in the shot because it's like this really intense moment for the characters. So... We wanted to lead Tyler out and then have Bubby like trailing behind him yelling at him and then we let Tyler pass and like we just go to Bubby and that would give us a point to like get her reaction as she kind of accepts that he's actually leaving and not just like storming out to make a show of it and oh my god it was the blocking was different like every time the house was not exactly how we wanted it to be when yeah. we first talked about the shot it was Mick and I were both so walking hard. backwards without a spotter in the dark uh, again he had to pull focus off of the monitor that was on the camera rig because we didn't have a wireless system. And this was all handheld on this shot, which mm -hmm. was the idea of it was for it to be handheld, but then it just made it, it's not a big monitor. It was Very not low that light. close to my eyes. Yeah. It was so hard to like get it sharp. It took me a few tries. <laughs> this is where I felt most happy with motivating everything, where it's like, I think all that warm light does feel like it's coming from a street light. And like, when you look at him, it doesn't feel unnatural that he's so lit up there, even though he was completely dark without like without us lighting him. And same with like the walkout was extremely dark without us lighting them. And I think it all totally feels real and like feels motivated from the sources that exist in that space. So we're trying to light Bubby and Tyler's faces right now in the yard. So basically we came into this scene and our plan was to motivate light from one of these sodium vapor street lights up here. But then we saw this little lamp over here hitting their faces as they walked through the yard. 
and we decided like it's nice it's really warm it's almost eye level and so that would be a good thing to motivate from to just get this kind of warm wash across the yard and uh we originally tried setting up some led panels directly onto her but it was just a little bit too hard and was like creating some weird unflattering shadows so now instead we've got three leds bouncing in so that we get a much softer quality of light i just remember it was very late uh i remember it because we had to do a lot of yelling and so i remember being like oh sweet let's do the 15th take of screaming <laughs> but he's like fuck in this you. small neighborhood yeah <laughs> yeah go night. fuck yourself Everyone's like, like, oh god if you're gonna fucking be like that then just leave i don't want to fucking see you ever again we're done we're through i'm chris and i'm here to oversee the visual effects um on the shoot here today and i'll also be doing all the after effects post-production uh, VFX compositing. Call me a dishwasher. All I do is get clean plates. <laughs> and cut. Sweet. Some motherfucking rap. We made a music video. We made a music video. We made a music video. We're done. So is it coming out tomorrow or what do you guys Yeah, it's re <laughs> it releases tonight at midnight. Yeah. Oh shit. Midnight today. <laughs> That's a wrap, dog. We did it. Mick brought this up so much that I feel like I'm a fucking asshole for keeping it low budget. But if you had unlimited resources, what is the number one thing? I guess each of you individually, what's the number one thing that you would have changed? Well, just because it is a music video, you know, like we don't need any audio equipment. We don't need to like slate. Like there's just a lot of equipment that we don't need to spend money on, even right. if we had unlimited resources that I think lighting, especially in my mind, is the big thing to spend more money on. But like, I mean, there are little things with like lighting where like I, I'm watching the video and I think like, wow, I really wish I could have set a couple flags and like not, or like been able to shape the light and like control what it's spilling onto as opposed to like these omnidirectional soft sources where I kind of just have to put it where I want it and be like, hopefully this lights everything the way I want it to light it. I think we would have really benefited from having somebody who is specifically there for art just to help with getting the scene set up. And because um, I mean, we were just kind of pulling just set deck and wardrobe kind of out of our asses the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that definitely had the least amount of thought. Like we definitely thought about it, but I have no experience with that. I'm not very good at it. And I think the video would have greatly benefited from somebody who was like, their entire focus was on making sure each set looked as good as it could and contributed to the story. Yeah. Oh yeah, what about you? If there's anything differently you could have done uh, just in this like I beginning know. phase, putting it together. Give you guys a bigger budget to work with. <laughs> Good <laughs> answer. <just> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's what I like I to don't hear. Know. I like, Again, I'm not very well versed in the film, on the film side of things. And so for me, like looking at this, I would never think that like lighting is something that would have elevated this just because I'm looking at this, I'm like, holy shit, like that's a well lit living room to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm not thinking about the logistics of that. I feel like one of the things that also made this project a really good challenge for us was so much of the work that we've done together or that I just see in general with music videos is kind of this philosophy of like, as long as it looks cool, it's a good music video. So people just like set up, oh, here's like a cool setup, like cool set with cool lighting and like, we'll just make it look cool. And then we'll do another one of those and then another one of those and then we'll just like cut them all together and it'll like, everything will look cool. Whereas this project, was meant to be story-based. Like there's a narrative arc to everything. There are characters that exist in a world. Well, thanks for thanks for watching the video breakdown. If you haven't seen the video or heard the song, I'll put all the links to streaming down in the description below. And uh, till next time, peace. Mm -hmm.